appreciated their dramatic green and white police uniforms that they were wearing in Cologne back in the 1970s. Uh, since then, he's been at the forefront of technological innovation and is the founder and managing partner of Exbon Capital, based here in Luxembourg. Now, he's, in fact, he's not just uh, an investor. He's a visionary and a driving force behind investment in companies like Pillops and Spire Global, which many of you will have heard of. We're really short on time, but ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you Mr. Jérôme Wittemer. Good afternoon, everyone. Good to see you. I see a lot of familiar faces and also um, quite a number of unfamiliar faces. Uh, thanks for coming. Um, I'd like to thank LPA also for inviting me uh, this afternoon to speak about one of the um, upcoming subjects of, uh, of this era. And, um, well, those of you who know me uh, know that I'm passionate about technology, uh, about the future, and about making it happen. Wink, wink, making it happen. Um, so you know I've been investing in technologies for uh, a long time and te companies that leverage AI uh, for many, many years. So I want to share with you today some ideas um, about AI that are both very simple and rather complex to understand. My message to you today is that there is a big change happening in our relationship with computers. And when I talk about the relationship, it's nothing romantic about that. What's changing how is how we interact with computers. And uh, in just a few decades, uh, they went from understanding only an obtuse language that we called code, you know, instructions uh, in a form of code, uh, that only about 100 million people speak on Earth. They're called developers. Uh, so that's only a fraction of people that actually can instruct uh, computers and talk to them effectively. To computers today understanding, reading, writing, speaking in natural language, uh, well, actually over 100 natural languages. They can also now see the world around us. Uh, you can have a conversation about what you see and when you show it to an agent, and you can uh, fix things, as we'll see a little bit later. And they also understand how humans think. You got the picture. Um, computers, until recently, were prisoners of their own environment, silicon. Uh, they didn't have any senses. They haven't been able to talk like humans until now. So the friction between the relationship between humans and them was really huge. And as you know, in business, friction gets in the way of efficiency and productivity. Well, guess what? This is about to change, and change quite dramatically. So AI models like GPT-4 or BARD or Claude, uh, they have all these new senses now, and they can help you do things without any coding skills. So this is the game changer. What you would typically do until yesterday is uh, write a script, ask the script to, well, write in the script that you want to scrap data from databases about potential clients, identifying the kinds of clients you're looking for, and then, well, let the script do that for you. Uh, then you would make a script to define what kinds of emails you would want to have for a certain number of subjects. So you need those, those coding cells. These days, now, with those agents, you can do that, well, within seconds, almost, and you'll get uh, a, a pretty good uh, answer. So your AI agent, of course, will see uh, everything you want it to, uh, to see. For instance, you have a problem with your lawnmower. Uh, it can actually help you fix your lawnmower today. It's not science fiction. So think about how big of a change that is. So of course, computers remain very far from being our equals. Uh, they make lots of mistakes. They're imperfect. But their leap in abilities in the recent month have been nothing short of incredible. So what we should all expect is that richer interactions between us and them uh, is going to create a whole new world of possibilities because 80 mo times more people are now going to have access to so some sort of coding skills with which don't 
require any mastery of coding. So the consequences, of course, are very hard to imagine. The first thing in terms of consequence, I think, that uh, is uh, getting pretty obvious, I hope to all of you too, is that this is going to change how you work. And it's also going to change the nature of your work will become even more augmented than we are today. You all have a super intelligent agent. Microsoft, since yesterday, called that a co-pilot, or GitHub has been calling that a co-pilot for many years. Uh, it's a super intelligent uh, agent that's available to you 24-7. This agent doesn't just hear your commands. Uh, it understands your needs. It sees what you see, and it offers real-time advice. So, you can imagine very clearly that you can have not only a lawyer in your pocket or an auditor in your pocket uh, answering any question you may have about these topics. Uh, but you also have a corporate governance expert in your pocket. Um, you have um, a risk management expert, a uh, compliance expert, and all of that just for you know, the price of a couple of uh, coffees uh, per month. So, a tremendous change in productivity. Uh, I've made the computation uh, because I use it every day, and uh, it's a hundred to a thousand times productivity improvements for many, many tasks. So the progress you could make in your professional life, but also in your private life, is absolutely unprecedented. And um, as you understood, this is not a pipe dream. Uh, this technology is available today, even Again, it's if it's not perfect, uh, it's still very basic. But um, yeah, you should definitely try it and use it every day. It's, uh, as I was saying earlier to a person, um, it's like bicycle. You need to you know, train it and use it every day. Uh, but once it's there, it's there. So that's why I called it uh, the universally accessible intelligence. So many uh, in this room may ask, so what? Uh, what's the impact on private markets and, and my job? Well, the answer is, I don't know. Uh, it's really too early for that, right? Uh, but in all cases, it starts with data. And you've heard the phrase uh, in uh, this uh, uh, new era, data is the new oil. And if data is the new oil, then AI is the refinery. So how do we extract? The, this intelligence from, uh, from the data. Before any magic happens, uh, and you have your own train model with your, within your company, in your enterprise, uh, and you can ask it anything in plain language, and you get the magic out of it, uh, it's going to require a lot of work. And the first step is getting your data, collecting the data, uh, extracting the data from unstructured uh, data uh, pools. It's cleaning the data to train the model. And two of our companies, oh, uh, can I go back one slide? Two of our companies are doing exactly that. Uh, one, one of them is called Axelex. It's in the private markets um, uh, sector. And the other one, uh, Nextgate, in the public market space. We invested in those companies three and five years ago. So quite a number of years become uh, Gen AI became a, a thing. And so these companies go way beyond just uh, data collection and data management. They actually produce insights, unique insights, sense to their powerful analytical capabilities. So the promise of Gen AI, you understood my, my message here, is that very, very soon, if not already today, you'll be able to ask in plain language, plain English, what you want, what you're looking for in your company it, from your model, and the model will extract it for you and, and deliver it for you. I think this natural way of interacting with computers is an absolute game changer uh, for pretty much all organizations in, in this room. I can share two insights from you for, uh, from, uh, from my experience uh, with our portfolio companies. Um, the first one is that when we look at uh, how they've been selling and how success, where they have been successful, uh, North American players, uh, pension funds, fund of private equity fund of funds, have adopted, the, adopted these technologies aggressively. 
to eliminate manual processes and, and take better investment decisions. I, I can't say the same from European players who have been very, very slow. Um, the second insight is when you look at the adoption of these technologies by public markets players, irrespectively of where they are, uh, meaning Europeans as well, they're clearly much more advanced in terms of adopting these technologies compared to private market operators. They're, obviously, their margins are thinner. They've been in, under pressure for a long time. Um, and they know technology is a source of productivity and efficiency, and they can, harnessing those solutions, they can reduce costs. They can correct error faster. They can improve customer satisfaction. Uh, this is what they are doing every day. So what are you going to do? Uh, are you going to just watch this unfold, or are you going to accelerate the um, adoption of AI in your company? I think that's a very big question. Bottom line, you got it. AI, Gen AI is a game changer, in my opinion. Um, again, don't expect miracles. Uh, it, there's still a lot of imperfections, but already today you can extract tremendous value and a lot of productivity improvements in your daily activities, any of you in this room. And um, I think the industry will identify very quickly the quick wins, and it's going, it, it's, it might take many, many years, uh, up to a decade to extract you know, the highest hanging fruits, the more complex use cases. So my recommendation to you is get your data strategy right. Focus on that. So if you want to pursue this conversation, come speak to me. And uh, if you're interested in the subject, please take a snapshot of uh, the QR code, and you can get uh, access to my latest article on AI. I'm going to write more in the next couple of weeks on the subject. So thank you very much for your attention. Yeah.